us is part of what we do as a church, as a body of Christ. We follow the instructions that are in the Bible. For the Apostle Paul speaking to the church, he instructs us to always do this in remembrance of the biggest sacrifice in all of history. To remember our Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ, when he hung on that cross and he bled to wash away the sins of the world. So as we begin to prepare ourselves, I ask you, as you hold the bread and the wine, one of the instructions that Paul gave the church was a serious one before taking the Holy Communion. The Apostle Paul instructed the church he said, before you take this, make sure that your heart is clean. Make sure that you don't drink this cup and eat up this bread while there's still sin in your heart, while you're harboring feelings or resentment towards someone, while you're holding a grudge. Don't do it today. Let it go. You don't forget it for the person. You forget it for yourself. The holding resentment Not only that, after they 
took 39 strikes to the back. But he went like this, and it pulled, literally, it ripped his skin right off. Oh, he got it back. And he did it for you and for me. I want you to take the bread. I want you to hold it up. Now, I don't know about you, but I believe, this church believes, physical healing. We believe in physical healing. How many believe that God still heals? How many believe that? The Bible says that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. The Bible says that by his Christ we are healed. So this church believes in a God who still heals. We believe it. You might be skeptical today and say, Pastor, I don't know I think the healing thing, I think that passed. I think that passed. Many believe that. And I respect. I'm okay. For me, see, not only do I believe it because the Bible talks about it, I believe it because I experienced it. I believe it because I have a friend who was paralyzed in a wheelchair. Yolanda Sosa, she's a pastor today in New Jersey. I saw this woman in a wheelchair. And I remember the day that she got up from that wheelchair. Don't you tell me that God will be when I see it with my own eyes. When I personally knew the person who was on that wheelchair. Don't you tell me that God doesn't heal. He heals. Why some get healed, some don't? I don't know the answer to it. I'll be quite honest. But I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna allow, just because some people don't get healed, I'm not gonna stop believing God for a miracle. He's a God of miracles. That's what I want you to do right now. I want you to hold it right up. If you're feeling sick when you eat this bread, you're going to say, by his stripes, I am healed. And you're going to eat the bread. And today, I declare the free healing over your body. Are you ready? In Jesus' name, let us eat the bread. Begin to thank him for your healing right there. Begin to thank him for the bruise, for the broken. Begin to thank him. His body was broken for you and for me. Healing in the name of Jesus. Healing in the name of Jesus. Father, let your word be true today. The Bible says, in the same manner, Jesus took the cup. And he thanked the Lord and he said, this is my blood. Drink this as often in remembrance of me. The cup is symbol of the blood of Jesus that was shed on that cross. He shed a lot of blood. But he didn't need all that blood to be shed. One little inch of blood, one little tiny, one little tiny drop of blood was enough to wipe out all the do you know that the blood washed away your past sins? Did you know that it washes away your current sins? And do you know that that blood washes away your future sins as well? That's how powerful the blood of Jesus is. Past, present, and future. Today, your sins are forgiven. Receive that truth in the name of Jesus. Let us all drink of the blood of remembrance. Begin to praise him right there. Begin to thank him for your salvation. Begin to thank him for the mercy that he's shown you. Begin to thank him.
You've been holding back all this worship time. Come on, this is your moment. Come on, pray out loud with me. Lord, we love you. God, we thank you so much. Come on, God, you're building a fire inside of us, God. Right now, our heart becomes an altar. And we pray, God, that you would take my broken sacrifice. Your word says you don't desire a perfect one. You desire a broken one, God. Your word says you are near to the broken heart.
but what's the point of all this? Is my finances even doing anything for the church? Am I just giving the pastor a bunch of money for his shoes, preachers, and sneakers? Like, am I just doing all these things? Like, is it really making a difference? Is my heart really growing? And we get into this moment of bondage, we get frustrated. And so we stop giving. And your finances get worse. You're wondering why everything in your life is good except for your finances. It's probably the only part you're not trusting Jesus with. And we get so upset. And the key here is that they went into the fire. Somebody say fire. They did not get hurt in the fire. What was holding them down got hurt. Someone tell me, we grab our finances and we say, I'm going to get in the fire, but I'm going to leave my money right here. All right, God, whatever you got for me in the fire, set me free. But you're still in bondage by the thing you let go outside. Come on, can we bring our finances into the fire? It's not going to hurt you. I want you to know the reason they didn't get burned by the fire is because they were already on fire for Jesus. Amen. Come on, I said, I'm going to step in here. I love what they say. They say, even if God doesn't save us, we're still, we're still not going to worship. It don't matter what God does, what he doesn't do. He is so good. I'm not worshiping for who he, for, for what he does. I'm worshiping him for who he is. And so this morning, as we give, I pray that it would enter your heart, not just what we do here at church. Amen. The reason why we give is because we know who God is. Can I get an amen from somebody? Come on, you're about to step into the fire. Don't step in with some things to God's time. Bring it all in, and God will set some freedom in your heart. Come on. We can't live a life with blessings if our hand and our heart is closed. Come on. But the moment you open it up, God can start pouring some things into your life, and there can be blessings. You might not get $100 for every $10 you give, but you will get some emotional blessings. You'll get some mental blessings. You'll get some wisdom on how to manage your finances better. God's going to bless you in ways that you need, maybe not the ways that you want. It's the truth. And it does something amazing. Every Sunday we say this declaration, this affirmation, uh, this decree. We say it every single Sunday, and it blesses our lives. When you give, you give with your own heart to God. But when we say this out loud, we actually give together. Somebody say family. As a family. So when I say three, uh, you're going to go ahead and repeat this with me. Come on, somebody. Ready? One, two, three. We understand. Say it out loud. And agree that tithing is an act of obedience. Not a tune An opportunity to be covenant with God and each other to faithfully give 100%. Lord, bless your church as we give faithfully and cheerfully. Amen. Amen. Father, we worship you. Church, if you could just stand this morning. We're going to enter our last piece of worship here, offering as part of worship. You know, there's nothing that this world can satisfy. And sometimes we have a longing in our soul, an emptiness in our soul, and sometimes we can't figure it out. But I'm here to tell you this morning that only Jesus can fill that emptiness. The Holy Spirit can fill that emptiness. So I don't know what season you're walking into, but I can tell you that this season, I know I'm not more of God. I'm thirsty for God. I'm, I'm hungry for Him. So this song, as we sing this song, I want you to make this song your prayer request this morning. If you're really truly looking to fill that emptiness in your heart, I want you to lift your hands with me, and I want us to sing this song out together. Are we ready, church?